Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me say good evening to colleagues, and let me say good evening to you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this bill, which has been presented by the Minister for Finance and the Prime Minister on the health and security levy, the 2.5% health and security levy, which will seek to ask the people of St. Lucia, all of us, to contribute to the health reforms which are taking place and also to contribute to the very urgent and necessary security imperatives in the country. Mr. Speaker, before I continue, I wish to ask you for a few seconds of leave to say congratulations to all the students of the for North who sat their CPEA exams and to specifically congratulate Nicola Nelson from the Piero Combined School, Shemin, Shem Samuel from the Bellevue Combined School, from the Vijay Primary School, Sir Jude Sabri, Grace Combined School, Jahidi Shalri. All of these children were top students in the school, Mr. Speaker, and they, they gained some very high marks. I wish to congratulate also Although we have not received results, all the students from V4 North who sat exams at the secondary schools and also um, in other institutions, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just today, a family in our, in our constituency buried a very young man who lost his life in, in, in very tragic circumstances um, when he drowned a few a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, and I extend um, sympathy, my sympathies to the family. I'm sorry I, I was unable to make the, the, the funeral today. And also, Mr. Speaker, I wish to send sympathies to all the, the families in Vefor North. In the last few weeks, we've had several, several individuals from my constituency who have passed away, Mr. Speaker, and I know the families are suffering. Mr. Speaker, this 2.5% contribution, which the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance has asked the people of St. Lucia, all of us in fact, to contribute to strengthen our security, indeed is happening at a time when we have no doubt we cannot argue that we need to strategically place the security of the country, citizen security, at the top of the heap of priorities that this government has to deal with. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has indicated and other colleagues have explained to you, Mr. Speaker, and to the House, have explained the various initiatives which this government has taken in relation to citizen security. These initiatives, Mr. Speaker, are expected to assist the police and other law enforcement agencies. We see, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the brazen actions of those who want to settle scores among themselves and also innocent individuals, innocent solutions, paying for some of this with their lives. Mr. Speaker, we see the brazen attempts by other individuals to enter the homes of St. Lucians and to commit other acts of violence on the people of St. Lucia. The Prime Minister and this government has have placed citizen security as one of the important plants, one of the important focal points for the during the last budget debate, Mr. Speaker, and in the presentation of the Prime Minister, health and security, as you know, were the two sub-themes of the budget, and this debate today gives life to the intentions of the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the government, through the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, is asking the people of St. Lucia to contribute a little, contribute a little to health and security. We have heard from the opposition, Mr. Speaker, although not in this house today, but we have heard, Mr. Speaker, in other quarters, the opposition criticizing this attempt by the government 
to ask the people of St. Lucia, to ask all of us to contribute to health reform, to contribute to the projects and the improvements in healthcare in this country, and to also contribute to citizen security. All kinds of accusations have been leveled at this government. But the question is, Mr. Speaker, whether the people of St. Lucia truly believe that they, miss, they must make a contribution to health and to security. And we see it all the time. We see it, Mr. Speaker. We hear the people of St. Lucia. And we know the people of St. Lucia believe that this government is on the right track. The member for Castries Central demonstrated this a little while ago, Mr. Speaker. And the member for Castries North and others have spoken about it. The people of St. Lucia understand that we too must make a contribution to our own health care reform and our own security situation in this country. Mr. Speaker, three months after the elections of July 26, 2021, a team from the World Bank visited St. Lucia, and in discussions, they identified a few areas that the government should look into, or a few areas based on their discussions with the government that they felt the government had some kind of focus, that the government felt that they should focus their, their attention or our attention on some key areas. In the discussions, Mr. Speaker, it was felt that to modernize and reform the health sector in St. Lucia is central, not only to boost St. Lucia's capital and economic development, but also to improve our population health outcomes. It was important, the World Bank said, Mr. Speaker, that we accelerate progress towards universal health coverage. We know over the years, and some of my colleagues have said it, that we have faced difficulties for decades and decades due to inadequate financing and also suboptimal management of non-communicable diseases. We know that non-communicable diseases are the major causes of sickness and death in this country. We also know, Mr. Speaker, that the COVID-19 pandemic caused the situation to worsen. We saw during the COVID-19 pandemic and now, after the COVID-19 pandemic, many individuals who did not have certain conditions or who did not present certain conditions are now presenting, Mr. Speaker. And we are seeing many challenges in the health sector, especially among the older segment of our population, the older people in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, we know the member for Labry indicated that over the decades, public spending in health has been low traditionally. The, the World Bank and the, the World Health Organization and others suggest, Mr. Speaker, that we should be spending about 6% of our GDP on health. In St. Lucia, we sometimes over the years spend 3 point something percent, 3.4 percent, sometimes it goes up to 4 percent of our GDP on health. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, over the years, the call has been for governments to, spend, to pay more attention to healthcare financing, but not just putting more money in healthcare, but also causing there to be efficiencies. That is why, Mr. Speaker, Commitments to universal health coverage can only be attained if we increase budgetary allocations to healthcare reform and to ensure that we, we strengthen the linkage between healthcare outputs, quality, and efficiency. So, Mr. Speaker, this 2.5% levy will assist this government and it will assist the Ministry of Health and all of its partners to cause there to be the strengthening of linkages between health outputs and also to improve the quality and efficiency of healthcare delivery. Let me just remind you quickly, Mr. Speaker, that our NCDs is a big problem, non-communicable diseases. We say so all the time, but it is not too much, it's not too burdensome to repeat it. We know the leading cause of death in St. Lucia. And we know that non-communicable diseases between the years of 30 and 69, between 30 and 69 years old, that is the age group where we have 
the non-communicable diseases really impacting sickness and death in St. Lucia. We also know, Mr. Speaker, that we have an aging population. Our population is aging, and therefore the burden of disease can really be found in our older people. And as the years go by, with an aging population, we need to prepare for the challenges ahead. What I'm going to do, very briefly, Mr. Speaker, is again to give you an idea of, of the plan of this government. Are we working with a plan? Yes, we are working with a plan. Why are we asking St. Lucians to contribute 2.5%, a 2.5% levy? What is the basis of this request by the Minister for Finance? And have we demonstrated over the last two years that we are serious about healthcare reform? Has this government demonstrated that it's putting its money where its mouth is? And has the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs demonstrated that some of the initiatives that are in the manifest of the, of, of the St. Lucia Labour Party coming into government, and clearly the, the, the pronouncements in the manifesto after you win an election become government policy. And how are these policies, just, how can we see, is there evidence that these policies are in action? So Mr. Speaker, what is the plan? The plan is to cause us to be on a solid and purposeful path towards universal health coverage. We want to ensure that we can clearly state to the people of St. Lucia what the healthcare financing options are. We have said before that this has been the problem. The major problem has been how do we finance universal health coverage? And what are we doing about this? We continue consultations, we continue the development of a white paper, we continue working with the World Bank, local consultants and other partners to ensure that very soon we can present to the Cabinet of Ministers and to the people of St. Lucia the various financing options for the long-term sustainability of universal health care. But while we are doing this, Mr. Speaker, I've said over and over again, and it is the wish of the Prime Minister and our Cabinet, that we do not sit down and simply wait for an, an answer for the financing of universal health care in the long run. That we need to present to the people of St. Lucia some opportunities which will march us towards universal health coverage. The member for Castries South and Deputy Prime Minister said it well, that the research has shown that countries like South Korea, they introduced universal health care over 30 years ago, up to now, are still refining, are still changing processes to ensure that everything is the way they want it. So we will not achieve universal health coverage within one year or two years. However, we cannot have our people just waiting for services without improving what we have now and doing what we can now to march towards the attainment of universal health coverage. So what are we doing? We introduce maternal and child care services. We are, we are working on services for kidney care. We are working on services for cancer diagnosis and early treatment. What else is in the plan? So number one, universal health coverage. That's what we are marching towards. What else is in the plan for health reform? We are looking at our human resources, our nurses, our medical professionals. We know the challenges. Many of them are living to other pastures. And how, how, what plans do we have to ensure that we sustain the level of human resource that we need? So that we are working on. What about infrastructure in health? And I will not go in detail through this, but Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has explained that the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project is on stream. The St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project is happening. And we do not have the time to spend on rumor. We do not have the time to spend to debunk every minute that a contractor has removed his tractors and his, his backhoes as if... Uh, the, this is not one of the lazy contractors, you know. This, this contractor is in demand and he can move his equipment from here to our next project anytime he chooses. The one thing we can say to you is that this government is focused on delivering the St. Jude Hospital for the people of St. Jude.
We have said in public, and I will say again, and I will say again, Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister has said it, and I've said it many times, that we are not hiding anything from the people of St. Lucia. There are some of the buildings with DCA approval, we are moving ahead with those buildings. There are a couple buildings that we are working with the professionals, the architects and so on, to address some of the issues, some changes, and some of these changes are not because a minister believes that he's, he's an architect and he's a builder, some of these changes are because the doctors and nurses at the St. Jude Hospital walked the facility with professionals and suggested that I think this can change or that can change. That is what's happening. And I can tell you last week Friday, we had a professional from the Pan-American Health Organization at the St. Jude Hospital meeting with the staff of the St. Jude Hospital to do a transition plan to move the patients and the staff from the stadium to the St. Jude Hospital. I can also tell you that we are in discussions with the supplier of equipment. The Prime Minister met them, I met them, the staff of the St. Jude Hospital met them, and we are now working out which piece of equipment, which type of equipment we are going to change because of certain rooms that are going to come, the, the quality of equipment, the latest equipment that will change because we want the latest high-tech equipment. So we are not sitting on our laurels debating about who will get this and who will get that from the project. We are working on the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. And I'm proud to say that I will follow what the Prime Minister has said and to say that I feel better today about the St. Jude Hospital project than I felt throughout the period that we're talking about this. Because we know what is happening, Mr. Speaker. The 2.5% levy is very important. The other part of the plan is to continue to strengthen our hospitals, both in terms of management, facilities, and supplies. And very soon I will tell you how this 2.5% will assist with that. Quality improvement is also very important. And about two or, two or three weeks ago, we employed a quality manager, a quality manager at the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. What is the role of this quality manager? This quality manager will work with a team, and this quality manager's job will be, her job will be to go around the health institutions, the hospitals, the health centers, to ensure that the service which is being provided to the people of St. Lucia is of the highest quality, highest quality. And very soon, we are going to make this public, introduce the quality manager to the people of St. Lucia, but now I'm proud to say that this is another part of the plan which has been implemented. Another part of the plan too is to see how we can engage professionals to, to use digital health, to use digital platforms. I'm very proud of the St. Jude Hospital and the other hospitals. And in some way, some form, they're already using certain aspects of digital health. Some of the hospitals, of some of our professionals are connecting with professionals from overseas using information communication technology to serve their patients, whether it be at Tapio Hospital, at the OKE Hospital, at St. Jude Hospital. You'd, you'd be surprised to know that you can go to the St. Jude Hospital and use the digital health platform and they will actually produce for you, based on the digital health platform, your, 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 your dentures and so on, if you have issues with your dentures and so on. Some of the consultants who came from overseas were shocked to see that. So our professionals are moving them, we want to give them every support to move in the direction of digital health. So we know what we are doing in this government. We know exactly what we are doing. I will not tell you tonight that we are reinventing the wheel. Of course there were processes that we found. Of course, decades ago, there was research on universal health care and so on. But what I can guarantee you, Mr. Speaker, is that this government has a clear plan for healthcare reform in this country. And we can identify every step of the way what we are doing, why we are doing it, and we can show you the results of it. That is the difference. 
I am not in the business of arm and butts, and when Prime Minister asks me a question, or when the Parliament asks me something, arm, I'm not sure, I don't know, but this and that. If I don't know at this moment, I'll get you the answer. But I know that there's a, a clear plan, a clear policy. Universal health coverage, we have a clear plan and a clear policy. We have the steps and we are moving forward. But let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, the 2.5% levy, just in this year's budget, what it's going to do. In addition to what the Prime Minister said, we are going to spend $4.5 million for the employment of Cuban nationals to augment the nation's pool of medical professionals. $4.5 million. Mr. Speaker, we are going to spend $1.835 million under a new project, which is the Universal Healthcare Project for Maternal and Child Care Services. That's the levy. We are going to use money for that. We are going to need $247,400 to spend as part of the St. Jude Reconstruction Project in terms of consultancy services for certain services which we have spoken about, um, whether it be architectural services and others. We are going to spend $75,255 to assist in the development of our policy and program for older persons in St. Lucia. We are going to spend $150,000 for the transitioning program for the St. Jude Hospital. So you see, we, we know exactly what we're doing. So when people tell you somebody take out a tractor from a site, we are spending money for the transition. We are already planning to get, not 11 million, we are already planning with the professionals at the St. Jude Hospital, and they have promised me that they are going to reach out to the doctors and the nurses and all the professionals who move Victoria Hospital to the OKE Hospital during COVID, because we have the experience here in St. Lucia. And we will not pay $11 million for it. Mr. Speaker, the 2.5% levy will assist us because the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance has in increased grants by 10%. By 10%, Mr. Speaker. $3 million in addition to what we are giving to, to St. Jude. Three million dollars in addition for the, for, for the St. Jude Hospital in subvention. To the Millennium Heights Complex, an additional 3.662 million dollars to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. 360,000 dollars for various associations and increase in the subvention. Mr. Speaker, in the capital project, a million dollars for the urban polyclinic. And the Prime Minister explained to you that we must move the services from the Castries Health Center to the Castries Urban Polyclinic where Victoria Hospital was, and we are going to have several facilities there. The Millennium Heights Medical Complex, OKE Hospital will operate a secondary care wing. We are going to have urgent care up there. We are, we are also going to have $1.3 million to assist at the stadium currently, because there are several issues, although we are moving to the OJ site, there are several issues that are currently problematic for the hospital, and we are going to spend $1.3 million to do that. We are going to spend $1.82 million in addition to what I just said at the Mental Wellness Center to fix the hot water system, Mr. Speaker. We are going to spend $500,000 for the reconstruction of the Larishus Wellness Center in Denry North. The 4.5%, Mr. Speaker. Sorry, the 2. 2.5%, 2.5%. So, Mr. Speaker, during the, next, during the next few years, under our, under our universal health coverage, we want to also focus, I said before, on kidney care, preventative care. We have a big problem with dialysis. A very conservative estimate puts the numbers, when you look at the, those who are under observation or those who are being treated at St. Jude, OKEU, and the private sector, we have over 179 people, and that's very conservative, Mr. Speaker. And if you look at sessions at $150 per session, at the OKEU alone, 
individuals would have to be paying approximately $2,246,000 for treatment, for kidney treatment. If you look at the St. Jude Hospital, at a cost of $150 per session, St. Lucians who are under treatment for kidney problems would have to be paying over $1.1 million. And we are not talking, this is just very conservative, Mr. Speaker. And these are just two of the public facilities. We are not talking about the private facilities. And in the private sector, you pay $500 per session for your kidney, for kidney um, treatment, for dialysis. So as part of our universal health coverage, the 2.5% levy will assist us with that. I've said about cancer screening, and very importantly, Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank the World Bank for the performance-based financing pilot program. We launched it a couple weeks ago, and hypertensive and diabetic patients will be getting assistance, but we will need to use some of our 2.5, uh, the proceeds of the 2.5% to help us to sustain the performance-based financing program. We want to ensure, Mr. Speaker, that our maintenance budget is up to par. So out of the 2.5% levy, we are going to purchase equipment at the various well, for the various wellness centers, Mr. Speaker. And it's very, very important to know that we will spend at least $1.5 million to purchase equipment for the various wellness centers this year. So, Mr. Speaker, the, the proceeds of the 2.5% levy for health and security will assist us greatly. Let me just tell you very quickly before I go, Mr. Speaker, some of the other activities which will be funded by the proceeds of the 2.5%. We want to strengthen our primary health care. And as you know, Mr. Speaker, Anybody who has worked in healthcare will tell you that that is the basis upon which you reform your healthcare system, strengthening primary healthcare. We are going to prioritize preventative and community-based care, the implementation of health promotion, and the Prime Minister is a prime example of health promotion, okay. when he told you how he changed his diet and his shirt, the way it's fitting him, and all that kind of thing. He's, he's, he's now com he's competing with the younger men in the cabinet in terms of, but, we, but you know, we're coming for him. We are changing our diet and exercising also. So we, we, we're coming, we're coming, we're taking his example. <laughs> but seriously, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has already started. But again, Mr. Speaker, the future entails some other very exciting things. In the manifesto, we spoke about a school health desk program, and we are already working on the school health desk program. And I know there is a doctor in the private sector, Dr. Stanley Jean, who is very passionate about the school health desk program. Every time she met me, she would ask me about that. That school health desk program, she's very passionate about it, and I know that we are, we are formulating the, the modality. The general aim is to ensure that the schools, the children in the schools, get access to medical care and medical examinations in a form that will cause them to get regular access to, to healthcare. Regular access to healthcare. And we are going to implement this in this financial year, Mr. Speaker. So the, two, the proceeds of the 2.5, um, levy for health and security will help us in that regard. So this is another new initiative, which I'm just mentioning now, it's in the manifesto, but our tech, our professionals at the ministry are already working on it, and we are going to launch it soon. We have launched a program for dental care for all kindergarten and grade one students throughout St. Lucia. And Dr. Ephraim and her team are going around all of the schools in St. Lucia. Another new initiative. And we are going to need financing because Dr. Ephraim and her team are already telling me some of the exciting things they'll need for dental care. 
at all of our schools. So, Mr. Speaker, it is quite, it is a, a, a lot, Mr. Speaker, and I'm very proud of the team and proud of my cabinet colleagues for supporting. The establishment of a cancer registry, very important, Mr. Speaker. And for this one, I can say Dr. Remy is always at me for this one. Dr. Tamara Remy, the cancer registry, the cancer registry, the cancer registry. And this year we are hoping to, to, to advance in terms of our, our, of, of our work on it. We have spoken about the Cassius Polyclinic and, we are, and the member for, for Labry spoke about the golden 80 plus medical package. The member for Cassius South wants the age to go down and many people want the age to go down. And we will look at that. Mr. Speaker, I want to also say to you that we will be working at the Sufre District Hospital, the refurbishment of the Sufre District Hospital, and I want to thank the private sector for coming to the aid of the Sufre District Hospital. At another opportunity, Mr. Speaker, I will explain that a little more. Expansion of clinical services to ensure that we have internists care for child and adolescent health programs and also consultations on a number of pieces of legislation in healthcare. But I want to say, Mr. Speaker, I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that there are some other things that are coming. I know the member for Grosile is very passionate about the ambulance for the Grosile Polyclinic. And I don't want to make a, 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 a definite. A, I don't want to make a definite announcement here, but I am very confident that the ambulance for the Grosile Polyclinic will be will be delivered very soon. Very soon. I've learned from my prime minister that unless I see it, unless I see it, but I'm very confident, Mr. Speaker. Very confident that the ambulance for the Grosile Polyclinic is on its way or it has arrived. There are some adjustments to be made to the, to the vehicle. And so as soon as it's done, we will get to you. But just before I sit, Mr. Speaker, I really want to thank the team at the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, and especially um, the team being led by, by Dr. Eugene, Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford, who leads the Universal Health Coverage Program together with all of the doctors and nurses and everybody else um, who are championing the Universal Health Coverage. I just want to say, Mr. Speaker, that we are very proud of the program so far. We know there are 17 sites where lab services are available and they are spread throughout St. Lucia. We know that ultrasound services are being offered at the private sector agencies. The Rodney Bay Medical Facility at Grosili. These are private sector. The Helen Diagnostic Center in, in Castries. Medical Imaging in Castries. Getwell Clinic in Castries. Gablewood Clinic, Tapio Hospital, Castries. Dr. C. Philogen Clinic, Denry Village, St. Anthony's Medical Center, Viewfort, X-ray and Ultrasound Center, Viewfort. So the policy of this government, Mr. Speaker, is to involve the private sector, because without the private sector, in terms of medical care in St. Lucia, it will be difficult to implement and achieve universal health coverage. But as we roll out the various stages and phases of universal health coverage, other privates, other labs, and other um, private doctors who, who provide specialist services will come on board. So we, we are not going to leave um, any organization out or anybody out. We are doing it as we go along. And we seek the, the counsel and guidance of all those who have had the experience. And I want to thank all the nurses and doctors and the health aides and all those who are assisting us in this regard. I want to say to you, Mr. Speaker, that as the Prime Minister said, and the member for Castries North and other colleagues, I thank them for their support. But we, we can show you results, Mr. Speaker. 
when we introduced the child and maternal care services for universal health coverage, they said all kinds of things. We want to send people and make children, all kinds of things, simply to dismiss the effort. The results show, Mr. Speaker, that just between we, we launched on the 1st of June, and when you compare the number of, of expectant mothers who visited clinics in our facilities between May and the end of June, Mr. Speaker, or this period now, not end of June, but between May and this period now, conservatively, because we don't have all the figures yet, 186 more expectant mothers are attending the clinics because they are getting this benefit, Mr. Speaker. And the stories will come. Some of the stories are already on Facebook. The team is already, some mothers are willing to tell their story. The stories are heartbreaking and comforting at the same time, Mr. Speaker. There are so many expectant mothers who say to you that they never saw a doctor. They are in their third trimester, Mr. Speaker. In their third trimester. And they never went to a doctor, Mr. Speaker. Because many of them tell you they did not have the money to pay for the ultrasound. And they did not have the money to pay for the, to pay for the blood test. And this government has come to assist these mothers. And for some people to say that it is puppy show, that's nothing. Oh, they're just giving these people things. That ain't nothing. For the people to go and make children and that kind of thing. If you do not want the service and you want to go to the private sector, that's fine. But we are saying to you that we are offering this service and the parents, the expectant mothers are using the service and in some cases the doctors and the nurses are telling me that the number of expectant mothers have doubled since we introduced this program. Have doubled, Mr. Speaker. So I wish to thank the Prime Minister for his foresight and I wish to thank all my colleagues for the support. I wish to thank all the staff of the ministry for their support. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. Sometimes they say, Mr. Speaker, this minister wants us to do this and that and wants us to run and push. It. But they don't know I have a prime minister behind me. Tell me, go, go, give me, you know, and the colleagues in cabinet. So I wish to thank everybody. But we are going to get this job done. I say it over and over again. It's difficult, but we are going to get it done. We have a plan and we are going to get it done, Mr. Speaker. So I thank you. I support this bill, Mr. Speaker. And the 2.5% levy will assist the health sector. It will assist the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs to roll out these programs. And hopefully, Mr. Speaker, we will present to the Parliament the results. We'll come to you and tell you this is what we did with the money, and here are the results. And that's how this government rules. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.